You sure it's not sticking up or weird? Did you know Mountain Dew was originally made to mix with whiskey? Or was it moonshine? I think it was moonshine. I think it was moon. I think it's it's I think it is a moonshine. I think Mountain Dew is what because it's a Mountain Dew. Yeah. I think it is moonshine. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We were recording for that too, so you just put that in our fun facts section. Yeah, maybe I'll put that when the credits roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're back at it. We're gonna be talking about how to deal with positive adversity. Again, like I stated in the previous video, there's gonna be a lot of carryover because these things are similar, but we still wanted to give it its own video. Um, Kyle, what, positive adversity, how are you dealing with it? So positive adversity is something that when you set your goals, um, hopefully you set your goals, not like, at, if you set your bar too high, I feel like you're gonna be overwhelmed with the adversity you face. So if you set a reasonable bar for yourself to achieve something great, um, you're gonna get pushback. And that adversity can sometimes be positive in the fact that you're supposed to fight through it because it's gonna make you stronger, smarter, uh, more experienced, those kind of things. And the th a lot of people, um, when they experience it, the like human nature kicks in with the fight or flight and rather than experience a fight response, they have a flight response. So when things get difficult, they want to just like, okay, I'm not gonna do this. A good example of this, cause you can do, you can use this metaphor like mentally, but physically is a better explanation is there's a lot of people that go to the gym and they don't actually push through when the muscle starts hurting. You know what I mean? They're not, like, they're doing their curls and their bicep like feels the tension, but they stop before they should. They're not actually distressing their muscle. Yeah. And so, in that sense there's there's a that's positive adversity because it hurts it doesn't feel good mm -mm. but if you push through that and you keep going i need to stop making that <laughs> I, I i wasn't noticing but i just i don't know i just <laughs> i saw it and i could not address it because i know that the internet would see that and no uh, but yeah <laughs> If you're pushing through that, um, that uh, sort of just kind of will develop bigger muscles, it'll make you stronger, you know what I mean? And so that like that's pain, but persevering through that pain is what's going to give you your goals. Same mentally, it's like there's adversity that comes from, you know, maybe you have a job that you, everybody kind of feels like when they first enter a job, it's like, okay, maybe I'm not qualified for this. And so they start getting tasks and things like that, that maybe they, uh, they're they experiencing pushback from. Maybe um, it's intellectually strenuous, like it's causing their brain to stretch in multiple different ways and juggle different tasks. Maybe it's challenging their, um, their uh, ability to kind of like cultivate a, um, a work environment between coworkers, you know, and it's, it's challenging them but pushing through that and getting better at that and working on that is going to make you more experienced even though it's hard and it's not fun a lot of the time to grow in those areas so to me that's positive adversity is um whenever you're going you're trying to meet a goal and it's hard but you have to in order to get to your goal you have to do that thing you have to do it then that's positive adversity and that's something you need to you know, working through it's gonna make you a better person in the end. And so that point is what is helps you deal with it then. Is that what you're ultimately trying to Basically, yeah. Is is the fact that you know that the outcome is going to be something positive. Right. So then that gives you the fuel to push through. That's how you know this is this is something I gotta I gotta work through. You gotta work through. So here comes the John take. Here it comes up, boom. I talked about with the neg dealing with negative adversity, yanking that Band-Aid off, even if it is just starting with planning it, you know, in that, in that the moment that you feel inspired to deal with this. And I feel from my perspective, I shouldn't say feel very passive, from my perspective, I benefit a lot when dealing with positive adversity by being very intentional any adversity really but a lot of planning yeah 
for, for positive adversity. A lot of internal work to make sure that you handle it efficiently, effectively, to maximize, because you really don't want to be wasting your energy or burning your energy up for something that you assume is good, and then you kind of find out when you're, when you're through it, you're like, well, I made myself suffer an awful lot. It really didn't get much in return. Right. You know, a lot of times people do this with crash diets. You know, there's some positive adversity for you, right? Yeah. But then you find out, well, man, I, I probably could have lost this weight more effectively and efficiently if I didn't do the crash diet. So to me, the planning in, in the, the positive adversity benefits more from that planning phase from my perspective from from my own experience and i think that it would probably help a lot of other people so that's where i feel like planning now and again you could start right away i love that I, I i live like that immediately start i mean even just planning and writing the budget out and finding the parts you need and and, and laying the groundwork in your head and your heart and how you're gonna do this and what you're gonna say and how you're gonna handle this and what are you gonna do, where are you gonna put the resources and where are you gonna store these things and you know, when the season's done, where are you gonna put them? And uh, yeah, just going through all these different scenarios in your head. All that stuff counts. That counts as work towards you solving what you're dealing with. And when, it's, when it has that positive outcome to, to work off what you said, I love that point that you made which is when you know the outcome is going to be something that is growth and is positive and I said that a lot in this video <laughs> and, and is good and it's for the greater good and, and for you and maybe for you and other people or maybe it's just other people. When you know that it really helps fuel you and take that energy throughout the entire process that okay this is ultimately for good for the greater good of myself or, or everybody else or whatever it is, th this is good and you can use that fuel, that's that stage you set. And then I think that energy in the planning phase too really help. Cause then when you go to execute that, it's like, oh, that worked out great. And then it, it hurts a lot less and you were more efficient, you were more effective um, to whereas when, when the advice I gave for the negative, it kind of was more like shooting from the hip kind of a thing. And I guess you could, depending on the scenario, maybe plan a little bit more when dealing with negative adversity. But from my point of view, you just got to like, not to talk about negative adversity again, but I don't know. I just got to cut that out. Like you got to get to that quick and you know what to do. Or you already know what to do. And you just got to get to that quick. But that positive stuff, I don't know, man. I've I've tried to do some things if, in that positive adversity realm, but because I didn't handle it the right way on the planning or the execution, it became a giant waste of time that was ultimately negative. Yeah. I wouldn't even say that it was negative adversity, but it just ended up being a giant nothing burger because you know all I did was just cause stress, undue yeah. stress. So I guess it was pretty much negative adversity then. Yeah. And kind of so that's the that balance that you have to keep and believing in yourself and and when i say that i know it's cliche but it's true and if you don't come from a family structure or you don't have the family structure or you don't have the kind of person in your life that has given you the the internal monologue to have that positive like pushing through it it can be pretty difficult and that's the thing I think that both of us take for granted a lot. And a lot of these things that we do and we say we take that for granted because we come from the dual parent household and mm -hmm. statistically that gives you a huge advantage in life. I mean, you'd be shocked. I don't know if you've seen those statistics. I've heard you mention them before, but I... Um, I, don't, I used to have them committed to memory, but the, the, it is like shocking. When you have the dual parent household and you're, most of your developing life, and you see like, wow, your, your future is much brighter. So that's a thing that we have that both of us have together that I think we take for granted. We don't realize that not everybody has that. So you have to really work with, you know, finding somebody like us or uh, another group of people or another something, a church or an organization or, a, you know, some kind of nonprofit or something like that that can help you get that internal monologue corrected so that you can 
figure out how to handle positive adversity because any adversity at all seems to be a thing where a person doesn't have the right internal monologue I've noticed like makes them shut up shut down like instantly like any kind of pressure makes yeah. them, makes them shut down because nobody was there to really show them how to push through that type of thing so if that's you we're definitely going to be the guys that help you try to to, to figure that out and push through that and, and change that monologue and you can be something great and you can achieve great things and you can set goals and you can push through and lifting weights in the, in the Kyle that was a great example burning and hurting but you know the outcome is going to be something and you know taking that walk is going to matter and you know saving that money is going to be it hurts right now to not go to the movies with your friends this weekend but you know saving that thirty dollars is going to count later those kinds of things and you've got to get your internal monologue prepared and and to help strengthen yourself, be like believing in yourself and no matter what, how how silly you feel sometimes, it's like you gotta give yourself that pep talk. Everybody does it, everybody does it, especially the people that are successful that you see on the internet or in your own life. It's like those people are, are their biggest hype man is probably them, really, truthfully. And so that can slowly become you and, that, and to help you push through what you need to do and what you need to get done. But remember when you're looking at these things that are positive, it's worth the struggle. It's worth, the cost will seem so little when you get to the other side. You know, it really will. And so it's worth it all. Ultimately, that's what I'd like to leave you with is just to say that it's 100% worth it. Hang in there, you got this, stick around with us. We're gonna take care of you. Hey, we're gonna have a new series of chat cast coming. So, until next time, peace.